right, fellas. Peek and peek and go. Peek and peek and peek and pucka pucka peeky pucka pucka. Mika maka 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 mo. I should probably get this thing started. No. Okay. Now you have some kind of cool intro. Cheers. Yeah, but that'll that's. That's separate. Searchable reptiles are what it is. It goes like. It sounds like this. It sounds like this. It's like. And then it's like the internet sound like that. I love it. I love Searchable it. as reptiles. Yeah. I've, I've never heard it before. I don't listen to this podcast. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. You like that? Yeah, it took like 10 seconds. Searchable as reptiles. That's what, Wild Turkey 101. Really? That's where I like to start all of my days. That's interesting. I had no idea what it was. I'm not generally a wild turkey fan. Absolutely delicious. <clears throat> yeah, it is. Good. Wild turkey 101 is probably the best bang for your buck in whiskey, in my personal opinion. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know what it was past the blind test. Cool. But we didn't. That's not where we're stopping. I mean, I, that, wild turkey is not what I brought. We have uh, we got yeah, a whiskey sponsor there. tonight. A lot of times we have a drink sponsor. CNB Reptiles sponsored our whiskey night so that's why we're not pretty cool reptile shop out in the phoenix area they do like captive bred stuff only so they're really like promoting the advancement of the industry yeah yeah it's good they were they took that suggestion around we we came like decided on that suggestion like on one of the podcasts they they location sponsored us at one that's true as well (laughs) it's all all happened right here on cnb reptiles maybe the heaviest sponsor of search rules reptiles i think podcast yeah 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 freedom breeder was up there in the beginning but you i don't know Drop the ball there. I so, didn't drop the ball. Yeah, I mean, you didn't beg him enough. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I definitely didn't do Just any Just blame begging. it on Garrett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Garrett. It, it is Garrett's it's fault. It's Garrett's fault. That's actually my purpose within the reptile industry. To take the faults? Yes. I'm the responsible one. <laughs> every time something goes wrong. As long as I've known Garrett, he's always told me he's responsible. You know, every chance he gets. He's like, just so you know... <laughs> I'm responsible. <laughs> well, I meant like, you know, if someone goes, why did this go wrong? You could say, Garrett's responsible. It's that kind of responsible, Julian. Gotcha. I don't usually do this, but maybe I will this time. I'm going to tell people what's going on here. We're, we are podcasting. We missed last month's podcast. We'll talk about that in a moment. It's been way too long. That's the, only, that's the first podcast we've met, m- missed ever. But we're at Garrett's brother-in-law's place. Julian, he's a professional sound man. And so if this podcast sounds horrible... Is that what you call horrible, yourself, a professional sure. sound man? Sure. <laughs> I wear, I wear many hats these well, days. Well, he, uh, I, but, more than that. I mean, uh, you yeah, comp- I'm a, composer? I'm a, I'm a film composer. Yeah. That's what I do. But, you know, I, of course, being able to set up some mics and record in your studio is like <laughs> the bare bit minimum what you should be able to do. <laughs> right, so, right, right. <laughs> I am a f- professional sound man. <laughs> <laughs> I have many... <laughs> I was going to like, many brown leather books. No, I have many microphones. <laughs> Oh, it's good. And it's, yeah. So if it doesn't sound good, then we have somebody else to blame for once besides guys, Garrett. Yeah, I am responsible. No, Garrett's responsible. I was responsible. Right. Yeah, yeah. It also, was your us, idea to be us, here. It was also me that was responsible for missing last month's podcast. So yeah. already, doubly responsible. Doubly responsible. That's Let's right. talk about that. What, uh, what do you mean? I mean, as long as you're missing our podcast for the first time in your life, then that I, I'm, I'm hoping that it's worth it. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping for you. I, I was going to give you a bunch of crap about being too busy for me for an hour and a half, an entire month. You couldn't set aside just to talk to your good old buddy, old pal. But that does sound accurate. I mean, I think we could catch everyone up. It would be like, hey, what's up? We got this drink. Someone bought us free booze. And then I'd be like, here's a stupid question. We should talk about that for too long. And then Brian's like, ah. And I'd say, like, hey, you know what about super dwarfs? And Brian would be like, shut up. No, shut up. No super dwarfs on this podcast. <laughs> this is searchable as reptiles, but you're not allowed to talk about reptiles. And I'd be like, oh, okay, well, you know, I always wanted to be Gandalf or something. And then we would probably talk about what else would we talk about after that? I don't that? know. I guess we just, I guess this is the end of the podcast. And then, <laughs> Thanks for yeah, listening, folks. You're all caught up. <laughs> that was last month. That was last month. But now we have Julie, and it's going to be Wait, so, so Gandalf, that's who you'd want to be, huh? No, I, I think that was in one of the podcasts, wasn't it? We or definitely I? had a Lord of the Rings theme. Who would yeah. you be in the Lord of the Rings? Who? Wow. Well, nice. He's taking my segment. <laughs> is that your question? <laughs> no, no. I, it's, it's way less deep than that. What is it? Like, dive into the shallow? Yeah, dive, dive, shallow, into, the dive shallow deep into the shallow end. end. Yeah, yeah. Deep in the shallow you know end. about that, huh? But if I was a Lord of well, the Rings Well, this guy over character? here was trying to like ask around for some questions, you know? But mm. I was. Not you, to me, like his my wife. Yeah, you know? he's like, hey, that, AKA my sister. Yeah, but that's okay. That's the other thing, the outsourcing. Like, you have like nine employees, but still somehow were too busy to talk to me for an hour and a half last month. That 
I'm, Wait, did you want to talk to one of them? No. Because I can make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Thomas. I could, I could sit and talk with Thomas for a bit. Well, I'll, t- I'll tell you what. I, I think, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I've just been doing a million things. It, it, part of it was, like, obviously, we're out here in California right now. We're going to go to, well, this one's going to get released. We, we have just been to the, uh, the Anaheim Reptile Show, assuming it actually happens. But... Um, <laughs> I sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so I think knowing that a like a vacation is coming up, this is the the biggest vacation I've taken since Finley was born. This is the longest. Really? Yeah. Every other vacation has literally been like, I'll just go to a reptile show and pretend like it was a vacation. Mm. You know, when did I mean? you fly out here? Uh I, well, I will be here from the second to the twelfth. <gasps> and this oh, podcast. Like Ten days. That's a long these. time. That's the longest I've had. Yeah. And, and Finley's almost five. That's the longest you've probably been in California since you moved. Oh, yeah. I think wow. so. Yeah, wow. for sure. So, and then also we have my whole family here, which is the other side of it. Like, even if I do get time off, it doesn't coordinate with everything else. Mm. So, anyway, my point was knowing that I'm going to have like the most epic vacation that I've had. And by epic, I mean we're doing nothing. I've been. Sleeping the whole time since I've been here. That's an epic vacation in my That's book. That's my oh, kind heck of vacation. Yeah. Heck yeah. Catching up on five years of sleep, especially if Finley is your kid. <laughs> but uh, knowing knowing that. Shout out Finley. <laughs> yeah. I love you, buddy. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> well, you know what it's like. <laughs> I'm sure do. You saw him outside there. Uh, but uh, yeah, knowing that was all coming up, I, I just was like pushing really hard and I've got all these like goals that I knew would be too big for me to accomplish that I'm trying to accomplish uh, before the end of this month because we have the big retic fest party at you're, the house. You're excused. I, I, yeah. I know my MO is to give you crap, but you're excused. Well, it, you know, it's funny. I actually framed it in my mind exactly the way you said it. Like, it's a whole month. It's in the podcast is an hour and a half. And hour and 20. And takes care of all of it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I was literally looking at it saying, that's too much demand on my time this month. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, everybody. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, but, but we're back and better than ever, and we have two months worth of stuff to talk about besides the Gandalf conversation we had. Oh man, yeah, that's way too much. I have way too much stuff to talk about. I, I don't even know how to ta- how to tackle it. I'm not even going to try. It's been an eventful couple of months too. Oh yeah, super so. eventful. A lot of things have happened. By the way, congratulations to you, Julia, and my sister. You got number three, number kid three number on three way. on the way. I'm getting my sleep while I can. S- I'm like Uncle Garrett again. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm like I gotta reach some kind of like super uncle status at a certain point. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I'm not <laughs> we'll as super as you because I've been popping them out like freaking rabbits over yeah, here. Yeah, well done. Yeah. By the way, uh, hold you. on. You have four. He's about to have three. I know. That's why he's a more super uncle than me. Okay. Because I have more. Because he has more nephews, nephews and, nieces. and nieces. I see. And I do because my my si- my siblings, you know, have kids too. So. Mm. Yeah, that's true. All right. We've been slacking on this side. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, congratulations. That's pretty cool. Thank you, man. Yeah. Right. What's your, um, you, you've got, uh, so your your kids' names are Ayla Wave. Ayla Wave. Jude Current. Jude Current. Yeah, we went with uh, Ocean Middle Name Theme. And so this one, you don't know if it's going to be a boy or girl yet, but what's like your leading top name so far? For me personally, so far? Yeah. That's so funny to like share this, but like Ziva. Z-I-V-A. Ziva. I love that name. You got so, some cool names. I think it's kind of cool. He is like you, Brian, with like, it has to sound like this and do that. So he was telling me outside, the first name has to be four letters. Just because and the my second first two name kids have four letters. has to do with like ocean. Ocean. So the middle name will be Tides. Tides. So that's all we have, like kind of Tides. Okay. You know? So that's, that's, so Ziva Tides would be their name. All right. Two of my kids have four-letter names. One of them three-letter. We broke the... You broke it? You broke it. Maybe we'll break it with this one, the third one. Zoe or something. I don't know. I, for some reason, Z names, like Zion, was pretty cool, too. See, like the fact so, that Brian uh, even knows how many letters are in all his kids' names like that in the pattern is just... I, if if like, it's a pattern, know. if you have like, you know, four, you know, four I can't letters. even, if, when I yell at one of my kids, half the time I say Pookie, which is my dog's, <laughs> dog's name. Well, I keep <laughs> adding living which beings. Is, <laughs> uh, shout out Pookie for still being alive. Uh, yeah, no <laughs> kidding. I, feel like you've had I that thought dog that dog was on its way you. out the first <laughs> time I came over to the house, which is <laughs> years ago. I've known you for like well over 10 years at this point, and that yeah. dog, I think, was always She'd there. She's been so. there all the time. She was literally, like, when I proposed to my wife, I tied the ring on her neck. On Pookie's neck? Yep. And she was a puppy. And then, like, Pookie, like, came up and, like, jumped in her lap and, mm-hmm. that and now my oldest daughter is going into middle school so yeah, yeah. Those, those small dogs last they got they got legs 
Yeah, she's like peeing down her legs now, though, so I don't think she's going to last too much longer. Yeah, but, but the fact that she's right. lasted this long is a testament to how long small dogs last. Yeah, yeah. they last a long time. Yeah. Yeah, it was a and, bad And Brian, idea. you, you live in slow, dog. right? Mm-hmm. I love slow. Oh, yeah. You live in slow? Like, well, or like near Tascadero. I totally Tascadero. thought he was yeah. saying you're really living cool. slow. So, slow County. You're <laughs> living slow. Well, that's kind of the cool thing about being up there, though. I feel like life is a little bit like slower, chiller. It's very You know, like I, yeah. I love that area so much. We have a bunch of friends up there who uh, one of them, th- two of them just bought like a property in the middle of nowhere and they're building houses from scratch. Nice. You know, in a, in a Tescadero. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. Isn't that pretty much exactly what you wanted to do, right? Yeah, yeah. That was the that's idea. That's not too far off. Yeah, they yeah, just yeah. did that. I don't know if you know uh, Drew Barefoot or uh, um, Ben, um, gosh, now my head. They have a, a film company called Canna. And they have Canna Outdoors, Canna Family, um, they just have like these little sub brands under the Canna umbrella where they just do like really great filmmaking. Okay. I may have seen, they may have, uh, or my cousins may have hired them for some like videography of their, their kids in one point. Maybe. I'm sure. Maybe. Um, I'm sure they, they do it all, but they're, they're, they're killing it up there. And then I did, uh, I worked with, um, a film director named, uh, Chris Burkhard and, uh, he's up in, I think he's in a Tescadero too. And, uh, I've he, seen some of his stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so we did. We've done a couple films together, but um, yeah, I love that area so much. Man. I need to link in with some so, of those guys. You should do some video stuff. I do video stuff all the time. But I just take, let it take me to wherever you know. They're right there, man. I mean, yeah. you have some great filmmakers in slow area. I mean, it's like all these creative people, kind of like. But it, it almost seems like everyone's got their tiny little island mm. up there in on an island. You know, because slow's almost like an island, right? Like you're not really close to anywhere True. big. Honestly, so, I feel like everybody is feeling like that now after the last couple of years of covid shutdowns and everything like that where everybody's super disconnected mm. you, like you may have no clue what the neighbors two houses down well i'm, I'm true that one i know my neighbors for certain my next door neighbor jim i see him often i have a new neighbor now joe we've already hung out like five times even though he moved in like four days ago <laughs> <laughs> that's the way to do it um so there there is that I, i've actually for me personally i've felt pretty connected with a lot of a lot of stuff a lot of people and and things out there maybe covid happened earlier for me maybe in that you know like right when it first hit i was definitely was like all right we're not going anywhere we're not seeing anybody and then that ended shortly after it started right um You're like this is no way to live life yeah uh, the whiskey bar down the street from us decided that after like a week <laughs> they're like all right that was good. We're, you know, that, that's we're the benefit again. of like smaller little towns. Yeah, I think you definitely. know, like I know every single small town essentially did that. You know, like here in Anaheim. Um, I mean, we're so close to LA. We all know like LA was just shut down for a long time. And you can't I feel even like buy pizzas we were, for your kid's birthday party. Couldn't here, buy you know? freaking pizzas, not without getting judged <laughs> uh, in the parking yeah, lot. <laughs> it's like I'm trying to buy some pizzas for my kid's first birthday <laughs> since the pandemic. Getting judged over here. Ooh, all our glasses are empty. Yeah, CNB, where are you at? CNB. So that Wild Turkey 101 is not the CNB had got. was very generous with their whiskey. You gonna open that one? Yes, I'm gonna open this one. Oh man, you gotta tackle what that is. I that's a pretty special bottle. Right I there. went to a very special whiskey shop down here in Southern California called Cypress Craft Beer and Liquors for the first time about a year and a half ago, and was so impressed with the guy the way these guys run their shop, like the way that they really are just trying to bring really good whiskey to people in California for reasonable prices and not trying to jack them up and have people you know paying secondary prices at a at a liquor store which is what happens a lot of places now the secondary market is is crazy honestly. crazy and yeah. then a lot of liquor stores will find out you know they'll just google like what is this and the google price is always the secondary price and it's like you know msrp on a bottle of btac is a hundred dollars and yet secondary price is like fourteen hundred dollars so a lot of liquor stores will adopt will follow suit with that these guys don't do that they just try and keep things uh, available to their customers there's this whiskey called Stag Jr. that's been one of my favorite whiskeys for a long time. And I found out a year and a half ago that they were expecting to have their own personal pick where they went, you know, they had samples sent to them and they chose their best Stag Jr. of the samples to get their own so bottle like for a their single, store. It's a single barrel yes. whiskey then. So they're all like, even though it's the same kind, they'll all be slightly different. Right. And so, like, spring of 2021, they're like, yeah, August, we're expecting to have this drop and just, you know, be paying attention because they, they, the way they do it, they, don't, they won't sell them online. They'll keep it local so mm-hmm. people aren't just buying them and flipping them and making money on their good deals they give to their customers. And so August came, then it's September, then it's October, and it's like, oh, COVID is delaying things, and it's December, and now it's 2022. And I was just like, I gave up on this bottle of, that they were going to ever get it, you know, this, this barrel that they had talked about the first time I met them. 
But then I went to the store today trying to get this other bottle. Wait, that was today? That was today. Oh I went gosh. to the store on the way here from my, my, he my text, Cyprus. He texted In me. In Cyprus. Because we were deciding who was going to buy the stuff. So, mm-hmm. so Bill Cavender from CMB Reptiles, I texted those guys and I was like, hey, we don't have a drink sponsor. I know you guys love doing that kind of stuff. And he's like, heck yeah, what do you want? And, and, uh, He's like, what, what does the finest bottle of whiskey cost? And I was like, we're not a finest bottle of whiskey kind of podcast. I said, anywhere from 50 bucks to 200 bucks will do. And he and immediately, boom, 200 bucks. You yep. know what I mean? He's like, yeah. only the best. You know what I mean? So so but, this, but so he I walked texted in there. me the, the shop. Like, that's where you should go. And yeah. I was like, it sounds like you want to do the shopping. So yeah. I'm just going to pay you ballot to you, Brian. And it was yeah. perfect because it was literally on the way here from where I was awesome. swimming with my kids. So. I stop in and I've, I've got this bottle of the counter. I was like, oh, this one's this is going on. And then I'm standing there and I'm talking to the guy about how much I love their shop, as I do every time I'm there. Say, if I ever lived in Southern California, this would be the reason. This is your guy's shop right here. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he, yeah, I mean, uh, Hillary's parents are also awesome. But other than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, but the booze. Yeah. Uh, like, the grandparents to my children. Yeah, yeah. Hillary's parents. Nah, close nah, second. That's a total. <laughs> they second. come up and up. See <laughs> <to> a liquor <laughs> store. Miles away from where they live. It's okay. We know they don't listen to this podcast. You're safe, man. <laughs> Steve was just up visiting us last week, so we get to see them. We get to see them often. Priorities. We're hoping they'll move up. We're hoping right. they'll move up. Um, but yeah, so I'm standing there. He's like, oh, we got we got our Stag Jr. pick in. Do you want that? He's like, had it behind the counter. We haven't posted online yet. It was just here in, in the shop. And I, I like hit the ground, literally, like with my hands, slapping the ground like a gorilla. <laughs> just like all these customers said, because I've been waiting for this bottle. For, like, and I gave up on it. After a year and a half, I was like, it's just not going to happen. And then literally today, I'm standing there and, and he says, oh, we got our stag pick. And I had this feeling when I was going there, there was going to be something special. I didn't know what it was going to be, but I knew it was going to be that special. <laughs> yeah, that's quite special. Also, we're going to need proof of you slapping the, the floor. I'm sure they have right, security we cameras. We need to get security cameras. Guaranteed oh, they yeah. have security cameras. I would, cameras. Drop that I would video love right to see that. here if you're watching on YouTube. There's the security code footage. <laughs> Seriously. Brian, Brian did that. I put him up to it. So. Seriously. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny. I think he thought it was cool that I was excited about it for a half a second, and then he was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> So, so this is made by the <sighs> same guys that do Eagle Rare, right? Which is yes, my favorite. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. So I've never had this. I've never had the Stag Junior. I just had to hear Brian talk about it for the last you year. You have had Stag Junior. No. Oh, no, you you did. You it, you brought a um a little sample a little one to one Arizona. Time. Yeah. What a beautiful oh, okay. bottle. I need to take a picture of this. I lied. I lied. And that's just their sticker on the back. Julian, such a social media guy. Taking pictures. Like, look at you, you look like a foodie. I'm such a foodie, guys. (laughs) Hey, cheers. 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 Amazing. Thank you. You know, the last time I did something like this with you, Julian, was um, do you remember at your last house when you guys had the rattlesnake on your porch? Sure do. And I think I was staying at... I watched that video. I, at, I, at, I, yeah, I remember you recognized that? your front porch because of that video. I was right? catching it, and I was like, yeah, I can catch it. And then it like went down this little hole, and I was like, turn the camera off, because I'll have to. i still catch it, but I have to do something that something I'm not I'm willing not to show to on <laughs> publicly. Yeah. yeah, and then you could turn it back on once I have it under control. Remember clear but, as day, man. Yeah, that was Jude good. was so little. I actually went and watched that yeah, he like, was tiny. sometime recently. And Jude was like, you know... Ah, not two even bottles here. of Eagle Rare. Look at this. <laughs> wow. Wow. Every yeah. time I saw a bottle of Eagle Rare, I was like, I got to get this for I can't get this in, in Pennsylvania. <laughs> really? No, can't get it anywhere. Wow. So, like, that's your jam. Yeah, that's it's, your, that's it's your impossible whiskey. to find. Thank you, Brian. Wow. Mm-hmm. Taking care of me, keeping up my habit. <laughs> <laughs> You're the man. Anyway, that, that was a really fun one. So I came up to catch this rattlesnake, which we did. Well, yeah, like I remember you were in town, see a rattlesnake, and... I mean, typically I would have, and, and this is based on just knowing Garrett. He's just like, I hate when everyone just kills rattlesnakes. You know, like they're they're actually pretty good for the environment. They they serve a purpose, you know. And so then I, he, I, he was in town. He just happened to be in town. And yeah. so I called him up. And I knew he had nothing to do that day, kind of. And so uh, he shows up within like 30 minutes. Or you just came straight from. Well, I had I was Tepania borrowing my brother-in-law's Harley. So that was another good excuse. But wasn't like, it yeah. your Harley, your old Harley? It was mine that I sold to him. Right, right, right. Now. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I'm sure he was. In, he enjoyed the trip over. Oh, yeah. Maybe like 20 minutes, not too far. 
And uh, yeah, and then he shows up. We make a whole video out of it. And then on top of that, we ended up doing like a sort of a podcast. No, that's thing. what I'm saying. So it yeah. was really fun because I didn't intend for it to be yeah. that. But, you know, you catch a rattlesnake, got... you're probably going to film it. You know, yeah. it's fun. And then um, what was so fun to me is that, and everybody in our family, because Brittany is like, my little sister Brittany is like this too, but you're married to Brianna. Um, I've got my own weird business with the snake thing. Brianna is huge in the hair community now, and then you're composing for videos and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I feel like- Not Geo, no big deal. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) MBD. But- um, yeah, well, and Brianna just got back from, wasn't she like the lead hair designer for New York Fashion Week? Yeah, for one of the shows, for uh, Cohen, uh, Jonathan Cohen, like, I think. So she's not like, oh yeah, she just does hair. Like, you know, she's, Brie's like one of the most like well-known hairstyles in the world. Yeah. Shout out. Brie. Yeah. Well, you can look at, um, I don't even know what it is. What's her Instagram? She's big on Instagram. Brianna Cisneros. Brianna Cisneros. Yeah. And then juliancisneros.com is, uh, is Julian's site if you want to check out some of his stuff. But... But anyway, you have to figure out how to spell that last name. Yeah, good luck, buddy. Yep. C-I-S. Wait till the next kid comes. No one's going to be able to figure out those names. C- <laughs> Weren't you talking about C-I-S. dropping all the vowels well, out? I got, yeah, it. I got it. That'd be really funny. C-I-S-S... Uh, C-I-S... N E R O S. Well okay. done. There you go. Wow. Right. Way to go. I, I mean, it is Spanish, so it's and it is. Easy. It is your. Uh, you know, you just sounded. You're out. only two ba- <laughs> two two glasses deep. Maybe if we're, like, we'll ask you to spell that. In we're about gonna spell it again minutes. in a little bit, especially with this stag junior. This stuff is a uh, hundred and thirty five proof. <laughs> so, it's, it's, I was gonna say it's pretty hot. It's a lot it's stronger than kick. the last one. That's for sure. Heck yeah! Absolutely delicious though. That's why you warmed up. We just wait till it opens up it's, a little bit. It's, it's gonna strong get and better. then it's super smooth too. You know what's cool? That was like what 2018 or something like that. Yeah. Or 19? No, it was probably 2018. Um, you know, our businesses were all kind of still. We're in the hustle. Kind of just starting phase. out, and Bree and I hadn't even started Renegade Royals yet, which is a business we started during the pandemic. Sounds like a ball python company. It's kind of right. It really <laughs> does. Yeah, with the Royals. Well, they call them Royal Python. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, that would be a, a good one. Too bad it's trademarked. Um, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun to talk, you know, like we all just kind of, you know, sat there and just looked at each other and just talked about business and it was following a your dreams and, and interesting time to have we, that. We should do stone. the same video again because, the, you know, the business is... Are, are different, like yeah. so super different just in the last couple of years. And if you rewind like three years before that, I think probably all three of us were looking at each other going like, your plans aren't going to work. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You want to be like we didn't a even have plans, rock star like, hairstylist. You want to yeah. be a video, you know, like a, a movie. Film? Film? I was like, what the heck? Yeah, I was like, like that's yeah, okay, my sister's marrying a starving musician, yeah, right? Yeah. And that guy wants to breed snakes. It's like, why don't you guys all pick a little bit more realistic profession. It's okay to dream big, you know, but something that's at least a job, you know, like astronaut or something. Also, like, the only reason I think I was able to, I mean, I got the blessing from your father to marry Bree was because he himself was a starving artist, you know, starting out. I mean, I think he's like, how much money do you have in your account right now? I just got paid. Did he say that? Yeah, I just got paid. (laughs) I just got it. I mean, this is like after like probably a month or not, but I just got paid two grand, right? So I'm like... (laughs) Two thousand dollars, and I was kind of stoked, you know, at the time. Like I'm, like, my, I'm like, like twenty-four. I think I'm like twenty-four years old. And then uh, your dad's like, "That's more than I had." <laughs> he was like impressed, <laughs> you know, like it's. But only because this, you know, your family has a legacy of of taking big risks, taking big swings, you know. And, we took a big uh, one on you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> No, I I think Sorry. the reason they I, I think the reason they liked you is the same reason I liked you. Is you just showed up and were awesome right out of the gate. You remember the first time we met? <laughs> Who was it could prehistoric pets? Yeah. Pre- okay, Brian, you haven't heard this story. So have you heard the story? No, I don't think so. He might have heard this my is, version of the no, story at some point. I'll tell heard. you my story. All right, and you know it, it's told through the haze of time at this point, but um, which only gets better. <laughs> <laughs> I walk in. And uh, prehistoric pets, and you were kind of running this, the shop. I think you're doing I was sales. A sales right? You're doing at sales. The time, that's right. Yeah. That's right. And I think at that point, prehistoric pets was only like you know was a lot smaller than it is now. Um, and so we walked in, and and you know Garrett's all you know, straight faced. You know, was me, me, my sister's boyfriend. You know, going to be a total tough guy. And I, uh, you know, first thing he says to me. Not even like how you doing, like nice to meet you. She's like, this is shakes my hand by time. Shakes my hand. 
His first phrase to me, you want to get bit by a snake? <laughs> That's all he says. Straight face to me. And I'm like, you know, typically like, hey, hi, how you doing? I'm, you know, met with that question. And I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, course, I, I knew that it, within, I said, I within said, about yeah. 30 he, seconds he has he's told gonna, me the story. Now, now you're just I confirming that I have heard yeah, so, all of Garrett's know, he, stories he, he, already. He, <laughs> I, I figured that I had about 30 corner. seconds, 30 seconds before I realized what a jag off I was, that where he was going to actually try to impress me. So I was like, let's let's, let's take advantage it. of this. Well, situation. luckily, I, I actually had a California king growing up, so I was, had been familiar with snakes. Snake you know? savvy, all right. uh, a little bit, you know. Um, and so we go to the back. And I had never been to anywhere like that, to where, like, you just have all these rows of all these plastic bins, you know. And uh, he goes to this, like, the little ones at the top, and he pulls it out. He grabs, like, a full-on handful of snakes, just like Indiana Jones, you know. Like, ah, these are too small. Puts it back. (laughs) Then he goes, like, one shelf below. Like, the bins are a little bigger. Ah, still too small. (laughs) And he keeps going, just down the line, just, like, slowly, like, agonizing. And I'm just sitting there being like, oh, my God. Finally, he ends up on these, I don't know, it had to have been around like four feet or like something like that. Like a CB-70 size snake, if you can imagine that. Yeah. You know, work your way up from the hatchling rack. And he, he pulls it out. <laughs> he's like, oh, this one looks mad. As he's as he's actually opening it, it snaps at him, right? And he's like, oh, this is the one. And this, is so, a, this is a reticulated python, so you know that hunger strike. Yeah, and he's, uh, so he's like, just put your hand right in front of it, you know, and um, it'll do the rest. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. So I put my hand right in front right away. It does nothing. Absolutely nothing. He's like, no, no, no. You got to kind of like, kind of tap it a little bit. Just, Act just, like a mouse. Just tap it. Just in. wiggle just your fingers. Give tap, it a little tap, give it a tap, little tap, 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 And uh, so I do that. I like his version of the story. Sure, sure enough, you know, big old snap, you know, it bites me. And, you know, obviously because their teeth are so sharp, you know, like blood just instantly drains. And, and, and the it, anticoagulant. It, they're anticoagulant. So it's just like really going down my arm. And, you know, he's looking at me. He's not really like laughing or anything. He's just like, cool. All right. Puts it back in. Like, <laughs> he's not like being like, oh, got you. You, you know, no, whatever. Like, he just is like, cool, sweet. All right. Unimpressed. Right. And I, so I'm sitting there bleeding, just being like, what the hell is happening right now? And Brie is like so mad at him. She's just like, Gary, oh, you're she was, such a she idiot. was so embarrassed. So you're so, so dumb. So embarrassed. But at the same time, I'm like, whatever. This isn't even. A, this is actually kind of fun. Like this is. Cool. I think you guys thought I hated you out of the gate too, because we went, went to a restaurant after that or something. You're like, I know that you probably hate me. And to to Julian's credit, uh, and a detail that you didn't mention, like. I knew he was going to get bit by a snake. That's not nice or whatever. But I did tell you, like, you know, don't pull back or anything. That makes it worse. You just have to kind of sit there and take it. Yeah. And he did. Got bit by, you know, probably, I don't know, five, six foot retic or something. And didn't yeah. just kind of, mm, you know, it didn't move. Which is, I mean, that's intense if you're not, like, say you had a cow king or whatever. But Yeah. Yeah, it was not as big. That's for sure. I, I'm Especially just saying. Especially because I, I probably didn't feed it as much as I should have. <laughs> my employees at the shop would have flinched more than you did. So, I'm, you know, yeah. and they work with them for a living. So, I was, that's I was I met my first sister's boyfriend, I, it was not as cool of a story, but I just kind of pulled Well, you up can make it up. That's what we do. Yeah. Well, yeah. He, well he pulled up, he pulled up, pulled down the street in this, in this Mustang, dropped her off at the house. And I was with my buddies across the street. You know, it's a pretty rough crowd. He, he pulls up and I, I just kind of walk across and lean in his door and just like, take, he didn't see me until, until I was like in his car. He didn't even see me yet. He was like looking at her getting out of the car. And I was like, you take good care of my sister. And he looks over and he's just like, like shaking, <laughs> shaking like a little girl. I was like, oh, geez. Like, don't pee your pants. Like, I was like, oh, man, my sister's probably taking care of you. And it was true. She wore the pants in relationship. So I was like. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <she's> <laughs> yeah. Are Much, they together still? No. No. No, that was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. Not a guy like that. He peed his pants when he <laughs> met the brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Chase those ones away. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. That's so funny. Chased a couple away. But yeah, so how much of a jerk did you think I was after I that I didn't really think you were a jerk. Just a weird I just didn't think that. I mean, you're, you're a pretty straight face, so, you know, and you kind of understand, you know, you just got to, you got to win people over. And, and to, uh, at least my understanding is it just takes time, right? And I just knew I was a good guy, and I knew that over time you guys would figure that out. And so I didn't, I wasn't like stressed out about it, you know? I, I, I wasn't concur. like trying to get you to like me instantly. Well, you know? And you were talking about my dad. Like, my dad is the easiest guy to get to like you. Know, you just pick up a rake and do some chores, and then that's he's all like, you have. Like that you. is basically it. You just got to do manual labor for his dad. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah. I kind of turned into that uh, now in retrospect. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I, think I, I think I'd get along with Dad. I didn't know who was going to be here when I when I came over. I thought maybe like your whole family was going to be getting together and stuff, and uh, thought maybe I'd actually get to oh, meet your dad today. Oh, that would have been today. pretty fun. Yeah, actually, yeah. his dad would have been fun on podcast. You should. Yeah, drive I up don't there think one we day. we haven't done that. We've no, I've met seen him before. I have not met your dad. You haven't. I have not met your dad. Oh, okay. I don't have any like weird notions where I think I've met your dad when I really. Well, haven't. I filmed a lot of him on our YouTube. I know. Channel, I, so I've seen can, those, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you don't feel like you met my dad. Like it doesn't create me the same like problem that it creates for you, where I feel like I've actually physically met. If you can dig with Gary, his dad, um, you will like uncover like the most incredible stories. But you have to dig past the horse stories. Mm. Yeah. And then and then if you can it's dig It's all horses for the it, first it, three if hours. If you can figure out how to get maneuver throughout through the horse stories. Um not horror. It's horse. <laughs> right. horse no. stories. Horse. You can get through the horse stories, horse. then you get to the horror. Benedict stories. Cumberbatch. Um yeah, uh the horse stories. Um you'll find a, a treasure trove of like, you know, basically all our childhoods. I mean, this guy uh animated, directed Geez, all the cartoons we all used to watch growing up. Yeah, you know? yeah. and uh, so, and yeah, there's lots of stories. Anyways, yeah. back to uh, back to reptile. <laughs> yeah, let's get back on topic, guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, who's our sponsor? Our, uh, <laughs> shout out our sponsors. C&B, C&B reptile. C&B reptile. C&B reptile. C&B reptiles. Captain Bread only. Yeah, yeah. Captain Bread only. Uh, still, still C&B, so this is probably C&B reptiles. Capped in bread only. <laughs> Capped <laughs> and Cap- bread. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, only a misdemeanor in Phoenix, <laughs> as long as they're capped first. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, that took a weird turn. Dude. <laughs> it's getting dark. Leave it to these two guys. So so I have, th- that might be a good segue to the dive deep in the shallow end, all what right. do you think? I mean, yeah. sure. Well, I don't know. I have no idea what you're going to ask. So okay. Well, here it, it is. It could be a great segue. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, maybe it's a good segue. Maybe it's not. Um but uh, your wife, my sister, Julian, really wanted to know this question, asked us to do a little bit of soul searching. If you were a breakfast cereal. Okay. I'm glad you didn't say a little bit of an exercise and be like, we did this already, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Which breakfast cereal would you be? Oh, breakfast What a great cereal. question. That is a good yeah, question. That's... There's so many good breakfast cereals out there. Like, the, like my favorite cereals jumped to mind, but I'm like, but I wouldn't want to be that yeah, because they're very that. unhealthy. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know that I would want to be one of those, but I probably am. I mean, the first <laughs> one that jumped to my head was Captain Crunch. And I'm definitely not Captain yeah. Crunch, but that's I the do. first For one that popped Cinnamon Toast Crunch. And it's, that's my uh, favorite cereal I mean, like, of I, all time. I, yeah, same. I mean that that milk afterwards. Are you yeah. kidding me? I still I God. still get cinnamon toast. Like to this day, if we're in Costco and my wife lo- allows me to wander down the wrong aisle, yeah. we'll have cinnamon toast. Yeah, and it's not just one box; it's a double box. Have right. you seen that they sell milk tainted by cinnamon yes, toast? Yes, I crunch? do. Oh, like it's, you mean blessed by? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank it's like you. <laughs> cinnamon toast crunch milk. They sell it. Yeah, like a jug no, of no, milk. For sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of uh, like rest, uh, ice cream shops like kind of. Gourmet ones will have that flavor, mm. which is always fun. Yeah. You know, the interesting thing about that question is that what cereal you, you might perceive yourself as is likely going to be different than the cereal somebody else might perceive you to be. So we should go around the circle and say what each other are? Is that what you're I suppose so. <laughs> <laughs> I got grape nuts is also jumping into mind for some reason, which is just not good. Yeah, grape nuts are a little, but 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 they're great for you. So you're, you know, it's like I, my thing is like, okay, there's the taste, there's the flavor, but it's also how does it affect the person's body? You know, like is it is it like good for them or is it bad for them? You know, that's, one of the that's, things, those things I'm considering. Yeah, and one of the things I hear is that most cereals, like almost all cereals, like the box has more nutrition than the cereal itself, is mm. something I've heard. They create, you know, they created cereal. Um, the first invention of cereal was used to like subdue men who were in uh, mental institutions, I believe, to like dumb down their testosterone production and just kind of keep them a little Is more. Is that because it's like so void of <laughs> nutrients? It, it <laughs> actually was. That was the first use of of cereal. Breakfast cereal That's was fascinating to do that to, to kind of subdue the uh, mental. Can we get Jamie to to confirm that real quick? Yeah, we're just gonna have our fact checkers. <laughs> so, yeah, our phones are both being <laughs> used. <laughs> I mean, that, that's coming from a place that my brain is telling me is fact. 
Just like everything else I've ever said. Side note, he is on his fourth <laughs> glass of whiskey. So. <laughs> Look um, it up. Look it up. Let us know in the and comments. And grape nuts, which was obviously like definitely on point in the 90s. Not so much anymore. <laughs> I don't even know if they're around. I think because they found healthier ways to be more satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they kind of died with Michael Jordan's career, right? Like, yeah. gone. Have okay. you ever had the Ezekiel cereal? I have. That's yeah. also really good. It's like probably maybe the newer Never grape nuts. Never heard but of it. It's really good, actually. Definitely better but it on doesn't the palate. taste great, but it's like it's just so like a good whole for your body. Cereal better than grape or nuts, though. 100% whole foods. Tastes yeah, better it's than It's like, grape nuts. you know, $10 for a little small box. I, I think if I had to answer this question, I'm just, it's pretty simple. Just straight up Fruity Pebbles. Yeah. <laughs> Way to go. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. Fruity Pebbles. You don't really know what it's made out of. I think of. I'm going to, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Honey Bunches of Oats. Yeah, that's Ooh, you. Ooh, that's a good one. That's me. A little yeah. sugar. A little, a little flakes. A little nutty. A little, little granola. A little, 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 little uh, nutty apple Some taste. almonds, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but all together, just a damn good cereal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that is probably I, one of my favorite, you know, current cereals would be Honey Bunches of Oats. I more classic. often eat cereal in place of ice cream at night at times. Like, Same. So that, it's better same. at night than it is in the morning. I never eat it during the day sure. ever. It's yeah. always past it, nine p.m. Yeah, it's like I already had dinner. I really shouldn't eat anything, but I'm gonna pour myself a big bowl of cereal. Yeah, usually I'll do like a granola or something like that. So I'm like, I'm being healthier, you know, yeah. air quotes. But it's probably the worst thing you can do right before bed is eat you know, eat uh, <laughs> dairy and then like yeah. a bunch of carbs, sugar and carbs. Have yeah, you ever totally. had the cereal O's? It's just called O's. I love O's. And the outside, it had a little thing inside. Yeah, it's oh. like a big. You know, it's about the size of a Fruit Loop, but a then it's like stuffed center. with the good stuff mm-hmm, in the yeah. middle. Mm-hmm. And the outside almost tastes like Captain Crunch. And it's O's. And I it was has almost going to say I think O's Cusco might be O's. I'm going to go with that. It's got, yeah, it's got all the good stuff in the middle. It's got exclamation point in the. Is it like O H exclamation point? That's the one. That's yes. probably my all-time favorite cereal. Yeah, and then my second best, weirdly well, enough, if, if that's would what be I am, the shredded. You're, you're saying it wrong. Then. Shredded oats, the big ones though, the big wafers. That's yeah, the my ones second that just favorite. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that's three fun. of them that's in a packet, the, you know, and knowing, I always want four in a bowl. Knowing your 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 father, I feel like that's that's you grew up kind of probably doing that a little bit, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. It was like shredded. Yeah. yeah it's like either that or oatmeal. Shredded wheat or, no, just like a can of sardines. <laughs> a can of sardines. <laughs> like just open the can and eat it. Yeah. The that frosted, sounds absolutely miserable. Frosted mm-hmm. shredded wheat I was surprisingly fond of. You know, that was Those are, that's, a, that's amazing cereal. And it does good. It actually does good. Me. The frosting no. makes it for nah, me. I don't like when it. it gets, but when it gets, when it soaks up the milk and you get all that yeah. milk, like I, I would that think I would like that. That's I'll why I like the big ones. Yeah. Because I used to, here's what I do with my cereal. I would like, Pour the milk in first, and then pour enough cereal on top to where I can eat it before any of it gets soggy. Yeah, that's and what you I do. Bite so. it, and like all the milk is just dripping out. It's like it's like the ultra rare steak version of cereal. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's nice. <laughs> but if I'm if I'm O's, then you got to say it right. It's, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It, what kind oh. of way is it? Oh. No, oh. that's Dave Coffin. Okay. <laughs> 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 you know now oh. I feel like I'm <laughs> I'm tainted by like knowing what the sugar is and how bad a lot of this stuff is for me. <laughs> you can't even <laughs> answer this question blessed, like, blessed oh. by the sugar blessed by the sugar uh, oh, okay so it's Julian's like, like I don't want to be a cereal anymore <laughs> I'm done with this question I feel like there needs to be another question these are fun questions <laughs> <laughs> they are right if I, you were a plant what plant would you be I uh, almost wanted to change the name of the podcast to diving deep in the shallow end just because the question yeah it kind of fits the whole thing the well considering yeah. you don't like talk about reptiles the entire, t- the entire time that might be a, a good way to <laughs> we had this original plan we are going to have all re-brand. these <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep. we, ha- we were going to do all these different segments in the show and that's the only one that stuck that was it. Yeah, we had a whole list of like ten or twelve yeah. different segments, yep. and it's also yeah. kind of interesting if you're like someone listening to like you know hear a couple guys answer a pretty like ponderous question that you yourself would be like, "What cereal would I be?" Well, we actually have a, a Facebook page for Searchable as Reptiles, which is really fun because a lot of people will go on there and they'll you know make a post posing the question, and we'll listen to all oh, of our readers cool. like, "What breakfast cereal are you?" That's if cool. you're dying to tell us, you can jump on the Facebook page and check it out. And I'll jump on Facebook for the first time in four months. And then <laughs> I deleted it off my phone. Yeah. I want to delete everything and then just throw my phone, but I have to record the podcast. <laughs> Honestly, I, I, I wish I could just remove uh, social media from my life altogether, but it's uh, necessary. With a small business thing, that. you've 
have to. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, it, it, knowing... You guys how crush it, it too. Knowing You're how it on a social media is like, I'm not in either of your industries. I love seeing what you guys oh. do. Well, I mean, she does it way more consistent than I do, um, which is, like, literally key. It's just consistency, right? Um, but... Uh, you lost. I forgot what I was going to say. You want to delete it from your life. Entirely. Yeah. And like knowing like kind of just the effects that it has on you. And, and, you know, like I know like unhinged, it's like I'll wake up in the morning and just go first. What time is it? Oh, okay. Straight to Instagram or something mm. like that. And it's just like so bad, you know, so bad to start off your day that way. So bad. To, it's such a waster of your time. And so like if I could just delete it from my life, you know, I would. But it's it's kind of how you stay connected. And especially if you run businesses, you kind of you have to stay connected. So you have to become yeah. more disciplined and you have to, you know, grow. But uh, I, I've it'd be been, easier just out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. yeah. I've yeah. been fortunate to be able to, like, hire a social media kind of team now. But even so, even with them making most of the posts and, you know, connecting and stuff like that, I would say that social media is probably, like, the number two most stressful thing that, that bugs me. I've been, mm. like... Since we talked two months ago, I've been like more stressed out than I ever have been in my life. Oh, you're going, you're swinging hard now, uh, which is good. Uh, no, 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 it's going to pay off. Yeah, it's but, definitely going to pay off. You should hear. Some but of I can the like physically people. feel it in my body that I'm mm. stressed, and I'm not a stress, or I, I've never dealt with like anxiety or worry or any of that stuff. And I, I don't know that I'm like anxious even now, but I'm just saying like I've, I'm not used to those kinds of feelings. You know what I mean? So, you should hear some of the things the that people are saying about you behind the scenes as far as like what they think, the effect they think you're going to have long term on the reptile industry. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. I think a lot of them are stressing me out. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a vocal few that like, you know, it, yeah, it's always when you, when it's you good. like let put me, your let me darlings out Let me read. It's good. Yeah. Oh, no. I, I followed you. I was just okay. being a jag off again. But uh, you no, keep the, saying jag off. Well, because I'm, <laughs> I'm from Pittsburgh. Got to got to represent. Got to represent. You want some ketchup? Oh, you can put it in your whiskey. We do. You're from California. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. But uh, no, I, I think it's when you're especially like I know a lot of people get stressed out either because, you know, like they're chasing likes and stuff like that. Or maybe they're comparing themselves to other people on social media, I think mm. is really toxic. You know, you're like comparing your real life to someone else's highlight reel, so to speak, and feeling. But none of none of it is that for me. For me, it's when I try really hard or I'll be super just honest, brutally honest and vulnerable and put that on social media. And then people like tear it apart. Then I'm just like, Grr, you know what I mean? And it's mm. really hard for me to, I never really cared too much. I mean, you know this about me, Julian. I, I don't care really what people think about me, you know? Not what at I mean? all. Mm. But, um, but it is hard to not allow them to tempt you to either, either to react when you don't want to react or to guide or shape the way you do things. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you're like we we re referenced it, but you were saying you bought a bunch of pizzas for your daughter's birthday, and then someone was judging you because it was clearly more pizza than you would eat, and they're like, "How could you not, you know, so be social distancing right now, right?" Yeah. And and it makes you feel bad for having a birthday party for your little girl. You know what I'm saying? It's like so you're doing oh. good things, and it makes you feel bad. You Absolutely, know what I mean? I, that definitely happens, man. It's just part of it. There's always that's the thing about the uh, anonymity of social media is that there's that distance there. Like if somebody was sitting next to you, they wouldn't say that. And this is something that's been said many times and it's cause it's true. There's many things that people will say via the internet and that space that it gives you for me behind a keyboard and a screen and a universe away that they wouldn't say if they're sitting next to you, if they could see the reaction on your face, you know, yeah. or even whatever potential reaction you might have based on what it is they're saying. That's going to cause you to feel that way. It blows my mind. How many people, like basically do that and feel comfortable doing that you know like that it, they it, don't it see it's a real it person doesn't even on come the other into side. my brain to say something yeah i don't like what you're like, doing with your i life. would never <laughs> yeah it, it's just strange like there's no separation between who i am online versus who i am in person mm. you know i'm the same person but there's a lot of people who are it, able to kind of compartmentalize that, you know? There's a lot of people, too, with a lot of hurt out there, and it's an easy source of them to take their pain out on, on easily. others easily, you know? Yeah, yeah. They're living lives that they don't necessarily want to be living. But why take the effort and, and time to say anything if it's not... I'm, it well, goes that back might, to, that, like, that the That might be a reason cliche. why you shouldn't care so much. Because, like, Brian just said it, and I personally called you last week or a couple weeks ago telling you that you are killing it right now with 
everything you're doing on, on YouTube, the quality, the history. I mean, like there's full on slides of like planet Earth and the, the Earth is circum, you know, and then also <laughs> we zoom in on like Madagascar where this, you know, or whatever. And that's verging on, you know, studio network quality production. Well, that's Thomas. Thomas is, Brian knows this, Thomas is the freaking man. But that's actually what I think is going <laughs> to get you into this next level. Yeah. And you're just in like sort of this like you're working hard right now and you probably aren't seeing all the the broader macro kind of things that you're you're doing. And there's the few people that are like coming at you and being like, this is lame or whatever, or whatever the voices in your head that you're hearing. But like it's clear to us, you know, Brian and I and others that this is going to have a really positive long term effect. Yeah. You know. And you just got to keep going. Yeah. Block out the haters. <laughs> and take a break long enough to spend some time with your friends and family. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's probably it, too. If I've been two months of just, like, freaking grinding, it's been crazy. But, yeah. Yeah. You know, we got to touch base with reality. I'll tell you what. I One thing I envy about the way that your business, Julian, is is... I've always wished, yeah, you know, same thing with you, Brian. Like you guys are both like musically gifted, you know what I mean. And I've always felt like it's 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 goofy. I, I know a lot of you listeners can relate to this. You like you're the person who like sings at the top of your lungs really poorly along with a song in your car or something like that because you're just like, yeah, this is awesome. I want to express myself like this, but I'm terrible at it. You know what I mean? So, but your thing specifically, Julian, you can. Um, you know, I mean, let's say that you're writing the, you're, you're composing the score for, uh, you know, the next planet Earth or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I know that's BBC. That's not Nat Geo. Because you do like Shannon Wilde and all that stuff, right? Sure. Yeah. So you're doing We're the next together. Shannon Wilde. I, I wish. I don't I don't know if I am, but you know, we'll see. Oh, okay. Well. Um, Shout out Shannon and Russ. Come on. Just heck kidding. yeah, man. Um, but uh, y- you are... You're composing this music and you are being vulnerable. You got to tap in with that creative and vulnerable part of your soul. Truly. I mean, you're basically, you're trying to bring out people's feelings. Right. Is what's it. So you have to really be in touch with your own to be able to do that. Yeah. So you can be 100% bare, vulnerable in your work. And yet nobody ever even recognizes that it's, you like how often, there, there are a few times when people are like, Wow, the score of that film is what made it. And the truth is, the there score are many of the film times is what makes every film. It's always the score of the film that makes it, yeah. you know. So if you think about like epic scores, you know, you think about things like I don't know, to me it would be like Jurassic Park or, you know, things like that or maybe the classics like Phantom of the Opera, Star Wars. Star Wars, yeah, exactly. Those kinds of Basically John Williams. <laughs> <laughs> so uh but but yeah, I mean you're you're out there all the time. Millions of people get to enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? And you're literally like bringing images to to life. You know, with the music score behind it. You know what I mean? But at the same time, you just get to kind of like quietly sit back and be like, ah, you know, yeah, that was me. I know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but no one else does. I like the. And the an, vulner- uh, anonymity of it. The anonymity. Like, so, you, but you, so you're, so you're, and the, yet vulnerability. So to to your point, you are not anonymous enough. Yeah, I should have mm. been. I should have started you're, the YouTube you're, thing you're, with like the marshmallow head or you're, something. You're the face. Be way you're better. the face of everything going on. Therefore, you're also the punching bag. Yeah, well, I do uh, think that's why people do that with you know content. You know, like people that are creating content on YouTube is that they're probably not attacking ever the person, but it's like the brand or whatever, or the show or the, you know, whatever is happening. You know what I'm saying? But for me, like you said, it's I'm kind of one and the same on both. You're the same way, Brian. That's okay, media. though. I think that gives you guys a lot of leverage. You guys obviously have sponsors. Shout out C and B. Yeah, buddy. All right. All right. Hey, <laughs> hey. Um... You know that that's not a bad thing, and I've witnessed this with Brianna because Brianna's a face herself. You know, she's on pamphlets and posters, and uh, you know, people recognize her when they're going around and stuff like that. And and there's a lot of opportunity that comes to you, you know, when you are the face, and people want to hear what you have to say. What? Well, so she's my sister, obviously. She's probably 
more widely known than I am. You yeah. Know? Well, I mean, you're what you, if I'm at a reptile she's, show, people she's widely known me, in her but, own field. Yeah, but her field is broad. Her like, field is bigger. It than It only yours. covers people with hair. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. most of and us. And people that want <laughs> good hair. Right. Um, so, so I mean, but how, like, have you noticed her? Has she ever struggled with that, or how does she overcome those kinds no, of things? No, I mean, she she takes it with grace. She's she's very um, she's, just she's so badass. real. I mean, she's just like she all she's she cares about people so much. And and honestly, I think for her, uh, there's some haters that kind of will say stupid things, but she'll just like confront them right away, which is kind of funny. She's always done that. Right on Instagram, she'll comment. Right away. And people just, oh, uh, I didn't think you'd actually read that. <laughs> uh, and they, always, they always bounce back. Yes. You know, or, or she'll say something. You know, people make assumptions all the time. And yeah. that's just what people do. I mean, we, we have uh, well-known friends, you know. And, you know, uh, I've just seen how people like to make up what they think. Whatever they think, a celebrity they make up lives like or whatever. Mm. So yeah, because Brie do does a lot of celebrities' hair, right? And stuff but like that. but you guys, you know, people are going to do the same thing to you. And uh, even for me, you know, right now I'm trying to, I'm kind of taking my career in a new new area where I'm being more focused on creating the music that I really want to create and put that out there. You know, there's always a, a vulnerability to just doing you, you know, and yeah, putting that's your totally and, different and, and and like you know I'm, you know, you're cre- you are both you know, great content creators, you know? And so, I don't know. I, I'm almost losing my point, but, at, but I'm just saying that because it's just, uh, I think it's a good thing to just be doing really what you want to be doing. And that's what you're doing. So your, your change on that is kind of fun. Cause uh, you know, I guess if you're composing, they're like, well, here's the film and this is the kind of music we want. Right. And I'm sure you have some freedom in there, but they're basically telling you what to make, right? And you at least have to fit it to a film. But what you're doing right now is creating an album for yourself. Yeah. What yeah. are you going to do with that? Because you're almost turning back the clock on the whole starving musician over. thing again. Yeah, you it's know weird I mean? because like, now... Are I'm you going to make it? Well, yeah, it's, it's funny. I don't know how many people have done it the way that I'm doing it now. Um, luckily, like, you know, I'm not starving and, no, um, I just mean like, like you're unknown in yeah, that. Yeah, I'm unknown in that realm and I'm kind yes. of starting over. It's essentially, and I've thought about this from a business point of view. It's like, you know, I've heard it say that you have to kind of reinvent yourself every 10 years. Mm. And I think that's really I have what I'm doing. Too. Um, I think that in order to jettison, jettison me for the next 10 years, there's almost, and it's just a natural progression. It's like, okay, I've kind of achieved some, a certain level of success that, uh, you know, you could see the top. I could see, I know the guys up there at the top and they're killing it, right? But I, I don't necessarily want that life. I don't, it's a lot of stress doing stuff for big studios. It's a lot of stress. Oh, you can look at our, my dad. It's the same way, just kills himself with stress, you know, works for big studios. And, and you know, stuff. honestly, looking at your dad has kind of helped me even see a little further down into the future. Like what? What not to do? I want to be. Yeah, I just. It's more like. You know, I want to position myself to be able to do the type of art that I want to do, and you have to be able to, like, almost break away and and show people who you are and what you do, uh, and you know, for me in that sense, it's music. This is the actual music that I am, as opposed to hey, I can write that kind of music. I can mm. write that kind of music. And I mean, luckily, I've, I've kind of made a name for myself with a lot of synths and kind of organic textural kind of orchestral stuff and fusing all that together, um, which is something that I love. I feel like I've grown into that. Um, people hire me for that, which is great. It's not like they're hiring me to write like jazz music. I'm not a jazz musician, you know, <laughs> they're hiring me to do stuff that I feel comfortable doing and that I like doing. That's awesome. But it's still like you said, you're still kind of beholding to the production which is great and which is fine. It's just different than writing the kind of, like the music that when you have I to want. stand on your own thing. There is no film now. You know, there's I mean? no and film and yeah, it's just you and the music. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Well, it's yeah. interesting that even when you do that, you still will have these. At least for me, I, I I've been able to do basically. I have a full creative freedom over the things that I've been doing for the last while. Yeah, but you still get that burning of like I want to do something. Like something else, almost like yeah. I, like I want to. There's something I need to reignite some kind of fire somewhere to do it a little differently than I've been doing it before. House snakes. House snakes. Oh my god! <laughs> I can't. 
<laughs> Sorry, continue. No. Uh, <laughs> I'm just being Fruity Pebbles over here. Yeah, thanks a lot, Fruity Pebbles. <laughs> <laughs> and and how that how that looks hey, and O's. works. Uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, O's is a new thing. I, I could take that and run with it. It's just finding those finding those things like how does that how does that look and you have to I don't know, where does it come from? It, I'm asking that question for myself, you know, I have been for a bit now, like, what am I doing next? And I'm not sure exactly. I'm just kind of giving it up to, so I was, I was saved by Christ like nine months ago. Hmm. And that has been, been a, and Garrett actually played a good role in that. Um, Amazing. Whether he knows it or not. Um, and I've been praying for how to bring my work together with God's kingdom. And it, the morning that I prayed really hard about it, five months, five hours Later, I'm confronted with this pastor from Iowa, Freedom Breeder, which is the company that sponsors me up north, just like five hours after I prayed that and there. And here, here's this pastor from Iowa, like, I just showed your video in our church last week. I was like, oh. what? Really? And, yeah. And That's so he, interesting. So he flew us. He wanted to fly the whole family out so I could share my testimony at their church in Iowa. And I went there with Noah Sage like a couple weeks ago. Oh, I didn't know any and we of did. This. I know, I know. You've been busy. Yeah, I know. that's like, crazy. I, I have a lot to tell you, I guess. But it, this, I mean, this morning... You haven't made any videos about that or anything? Yes, I did. Oh, you did? Yeah, oh, I made I a whole it. video going to Iowa. And then okay. I did the whole story of how I met the pastor. I know you're too oh, busy to... Sick. I, know, I get it. Yeah. Um, but I mean, this morning... And it's just been leading in so many different ways. This morning, I was offered a part-time position as a youth pastor at a church. <laughs> <laughs> this morning? This morning. That's hilarious. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh-huh. That's pretty amazing. And I don't. I mean, I'm just. Ro- I'm just going with it. You know, I'm just going with. What I told God. I prayed to God that I, I just wanted him to use me in whatever way He sees fit, and that I would just go go with that. And mm. I put it all that. I put all this stuff out on YouTube. You know, some, whatever's happening in here generally goes in through here and through the screen, and then it goes out onto YouTube. And mm-hmm. I get feedback, and some of it's good, some of it's bad, and it just is what it is. But. The youth pastor thing, you can definitely make a, a huge impact in people's lives. I mean, I don't know about... You You grew up in the church and stuff. Do you remember any of your youth pastors? I love them dearly still. You yeah. Know, I, I would consider them fathers. Yeah. You know, a few of them. So like I'm Timo still, still, Scheunemann I, I, I still is know, like that. I still know me. them. You know, yeah. I, I could call them right now and just catch yeah. right up, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, and Timo so. was the guy for me, and he was the one that was the German missionary to Indonesia, and then... Pretty much as soon as I was able to, I went to Indonesia, you know, and lived there and everything because of all his stories and things like that from back then. And he always was, he was a really interesting youth pastor because I think when you think of like the main pastor at a church, they're always trying to be perfect or, I mean, not really, but this is kind of the perception, right? Like they're, they're leading by example and they're the perfect person or whatever. And he was like a college kid when he was leading junior high and high school youth groups and he would be like messing up in his relationships with girls and then come and talk to us about it on Sunday and you know what I mean? Or like drinking Saturday night and kind of hung over and be like, oh man, guys are really messed up and all this stuff. And <laughs> I will tell you, just never get into this because it's the temptation is too strong and all this stuff. And a lot of the things that he told me really made a huge, huge impact in my life to this day, you yeah. know? So it was, it was cool to have Noah. So they wanted to fly the whole family out, but Hillary was like, "There's no way they're paying for all of us to come out there. That's ridiculous." So, yeah. But Noah came with me at least, so he got to that's cool hear the testimony, which was pretty cool for me because I mean, I, I had pretty pretty rough cup forty years before. <laughs> How old's your? Uh, you said you're, you have a nine son, nine. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I would. Thank you. Um, and yeah. it's yeah, it was just great to have him hear that, and like I felt like it drew us way closer together as father and son. Just that that trip and we had so so many deep conversations about so much i mean you know and and afterwards like he's just like dad i love you so much like i'm I'm so glad you took me on this trip his son Noah is a lot like kira like very internal thinker very intelligent you know what i mean almost like 20 years ahead of their time yeah like unfortunately stuck in a child's body because they're they're already so smart and wise right and and then his second is kind of like riley which is funny because Riley always says she's going to marry his second son. So. After she saw that pee-pee hanging out. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> that was a different story from another time. <laughs> <laughs> We've traversed it all yeah. in this podcast. <laughs> I think any, uh, any opportunity to be a positive role model in, in not only your family and your children's life, but in others is, is a really worthwhile cause, you know. 
Well, it's like you said, you're youth pastor. Whether you do move forward with that offer um, or not, you know, it seems like you're going to be doing a lot of that still, you know, regardless as you move forward in life. It's even placing people in there just just for that, because I do want that, you know, and it seems to be aligned with his will, I I hope, um, or I pray, and... Like the other morning, I was supposed to have lunch with or coffee with one of the guys that does the announcements at church, and he wasn't there at eight oh one. And I was like, "Oh, he's one of those guys." And <laughs> this kid rolls up who I recognized from being at some of the um, like transient ministry that's been happening in town. I recognized him from there, and I was like, he, "He's like, oh, I'm supposed to meet my grandpa here." And I was like, "Sorry." So he sat down. Like the conversation just immediately just was steeped in the spirit, and uh, he's gr- granted me with enough eyes at this point where like two minutes in i'm like i'm not supposed to meet matt here i'm supposed to meet this kid here that's rad and we're supposed to have this conversation that's cool that's, and matt never showed up interesting <laughs> classic sound guy or who he you said he was a, what did he do oh he does the announcements Announce- so classic announcement guy <laughs> <laughs> we did finally get together yesterday morning super but. extroverted oh. you know to a fault <laughs> He got COVID and he forgot to cancel that. Lies. <laughs> Getting COVID is the new, my kid Steeped is sick. <laughs> you know, it's, like, it's, like, it's like before you're like, sorry guys, my kid's not feeling good. Now it's like, oh, you know, I just got a little itchy throat and I took a test. Because now you can just, you know, quarantine for a couple of days. You buy yourself a few days, you know, just say. Hey. And now, you know, fortunately, a lot of these variants are not as strong as they used to be. So that's, that's possible. It seems like yeah, it's going that way. That's good. It's great. That's good. It's great. Yeah, no, I figured you hadn't had time to see any of that, but it's been a wild month, dude. Yeah, a wild month in that, in that type of. Are energy. you guys the only ones that do this podcast together, or do you have other? Is this like your podcast? It's, it's the two of us. Podcast. Yeah. So we were sitting around. Ah. How it started was after a show with a big show in Tinley, at Chicago. Right. And we're just the two of us sitting in the Airbnb kitchen after so the you show started talking this together. Yes. yes. And and we're the conversation was so good. I was like, I was like, do we need to record this? Like, this is too good of a conversation not to, like, we, share we with the world. We were always sitting down and be like, yeah. You guys be like, what cereal would you be on? <laughs> no, this was, is so good, man. And then, like, we My went through a whole year fed. of podcasts that were nothing like those conversations at the dinner You guys table. are arguing over well, you know, we were trying whether or not podcast. he should be allowed to talk about super dwarves or not. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think the problem is we were just trying to podcast. You know what I mean? Like, podcasts are supposed to be like this. So right. we've gotten away from that, obviously, clearly. <laughs> So, but yeah, I don't know. That's good stuff. What do you want to know about Julian? What's what's deep and meaningful to you these days? What do you want to talk about? I, I mean, I feel like I'm. Uh, I want to hear more from 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 you guys. I mean, I I want to be a fly on the wall in here, and I I feel honored that you even. Let me be a part of this. Well, we don't know who you are or how you got we in. We don't here. even know what you do, uh, but you're in charge now. <laughs> fire away uh you know uh, like i said for me um i'm um fighting for literally fighting for um my career not my career like my my like artistic integrity and like hoping that it that that'll continue that's what i'm fighting for i feel like i'm at this place where if i don't release new music and I don't just like, you know, really, um, start releasing things and really like moving forward as like a, you know, in this new venture essentially, um, which means like touring and it means, you know, music videos, producing videos, producing all of that kind of stuff. Lots of, you know, cool content. Like I'm, I'm starting a label, my own label to just release this music. Um, that 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 music will in a weird way start fading for me in my life because uh you know my ch- you know it, we're about to have three kids and it's you know i've i've learned uh grace gratefully um how to you know make money and and you know we have we're starting multiple businesses at this point and and it's like you know we can start living a little bit of a, that life where you, you, you know, maybe you're not working so hard to try to make some money. It's like money's coming in. And so it's like, I could, I could see how I can just fall into like, well, I'll just keep, you know, making money and, and doing the business thing, you know, and, and live the rest of my life. Like, you know, uh, going on vacations and hanging out with my kids and all that stuff, which is great. But I know I'm meant for more. 
I know it. I haven't made it this far in music to just stop. And the fact that like I realize that you know film film scoring isn't everything was a little bit of a jarring experience, a j- jarring realization where it's like I don't necessarily want to be like the top top top. Or at least I don't see my if I get there it won't be because it's like all I want in life. Mm. It's because it just happened to through a you know, fortuitous side effect. Yeah. Like it's more of just a, a, you know, an effect. Exactly. Well, you let, know, and me, so like, I want to offer you something because I, I toured, I was a professional touring musician for 12 years. Really? Mm-hmm. Um, from my personal did experience, you play drums? I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not, um, it's not a life that's conducive to family life. Can it be made to work? Sure. But it's certainly not a life that's conducive to family life. Right. That's, I mean, you, you probably know that you've been in this type of industry long enough, but it's, it's, it takes something extra, a lot, a lot extra to make it work with, with family. Right. Um, so just, I had to say that. Yeah. Yeah, no. And I appreciate that because in a weird way, it's not necessarily to go on the road. Like for me, it's more. You mentioned touring. So yeah, I mean, that'll be something that, well, I mean, even my wife and I, with our last, with our business, we've been on tour uh, one weekend a month for the last six months, you know, and we did that with our, you know, someone would watch our children for three, four days and we go fly to Denver, fly to Minneapolis, fly to Georgia, uh, Atlanta. Where else have we been? We've been you know, a bunch of places and do our thing and dip out, you know, uh, maintaining our marriage, maintaining our, you know, relationships with our children because the rest of the you know month we're able to spend a lot more time with them. Um, so it's not so much to be on the road. I think for me, it's just to be able to put this music out and there's a lot of stuff you can just do digitally. I love creating content. I love producing. We have produced like two commercials at this point, uh, you know, for our business and and all this stuff. There's just so many other creative things that I want to do, but like really right now, it's just to put out this music to like put out my, who I am fully musically into the world and then like i I know film scoring will come i think more work will come as a result of that but it's just like a weird thing it's like i just i have to do this it's like a weird you know i'm not sure where it's gonna go but there's something about taking almost like this this time and this season to really search more of who i am and what i want to do in order to get to that next level you know or that next 10-year chapter or whatever but 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 I feel like that pressure so much that I'm like at this crossroads where it's like I either really double down with music or it's like I can just keep living a really good life doing the business route, you know. Mm. And uh, so mm. that's 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 my honest what's been consuming my thoughts. And I didn't expect to share any of that on this podcast. Eh, I don't think <laughs> there were too many expectations. But the way my brain works, it won't leave me alone. You know, it it goes towards if the film composition has been successful for you. I wonder if there's a way you could do both. Right. Where you set someone up almost like as an apprentice or something to do the film scoring that, you know what I mean, where that is paid for and they're, you know, you may make less profit off the, right. the film scoring, but you'd have some and you do none of it. And then you could focus more on the music because I think... The tough thing about doing what you want is feeling like you're you're pulled back to the the source of your income. So for me, this point happened with the animals, with like with reach out reptiles and stuff. Like we started in 2015, but I had another job for two years. Right, and I think that's really common in the reptile industry. People have their reptile business A side hustle, but it is the side hustle, mm-hmm. and then they have their quote unquote real job. And it wasn't until, in, for me, it was in 2017 that the reptiles became my real job. Right. And anything else would be a side hustle, which for me was like nothing. I just dropped it, you know what I mean? And went full reptiles. But that was when the the big transition happened, you know what I mean? Where, you know, and it would have been nice to have, like, I think you have the opportunity to do it a little differently than I did where you can maintain, you've learned so much about the film industry and composing and all that kind of stuff. And that is so many kids' dream jobs, especially the kind of music that you do. If you guys go to his website, you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. But like, there's so many people that do that, like 
the simpler version of it from home. Right. Check out this, you know what I mean? This synth song that I've made and all this kind of stuff. And, right. and they're, they're going in back and layering it and, and composing these whole things that they would just, I mean, people would pay to work for you for a summer just to learn that stuff. Right. So if you can get somebody that that is their passion and you can, you know, pass on some of that knowledge, that would be a tremendous value to them. And then you can follow this whole reinvention of yourself every 10 years passion <laughs> that is going on right now. I feel like such an artist right now. Uh, yeah, that's, that's I, I actually have a, a people that I, I do hire to do stuff for me particularly when I'm doing a film, like a feature, it, it's like a crazy turnaround time. And it was, it's impossible to write like you need 80 hours an worth hour of work and 20 and minutes worth of week. music, you know? Yeah. So, um, and which is why like I can write 20 minutes and it's not full on 20 minutes. It's probably like 18 in, in about a week, you know, it's not like unheard of to be able to do that. Mm. Um, you just get fast, you know, but, but obviously like, you know, there's people that work for me and, and yes, there is that, but it's like, I don't know. It's, it's, I, I feel like I'll always do composing. I mean, it's great. I have some great films coming up. I got a really cool commercial for um, uh, Rolls Royce coming up, which is oh, pretty cool. insane. It's a Western, full-on Western. Really? Is and it a launch of a new product? It's the Cayenne. Not the Cayenne. That's Porsche. Uh, <laughs> it's the... Uh, they have like an SUV, which oh, is uh, um, crazy. It oh, starts with a C. Yeah. I think I saw one on the road today. It's nuts. I know what it is. I, it's like four hundred and fifty thousand hmm. dollars. The oh, one I saw shoot. was pink. What's it called? No doubt. If you can afford it, why not just make it the most ridiculous <laughs> color ever? Um, I can't remember what it's called. I know the one that you're talking. It's about. like that stuff will always be there, but it's like I don't think I'll be able to actually keep that going yeah. with integrity unless I do this step. It's just like a weird thing. I don't know. I, and and I, I personally believe it's something, you know, because, I, you know, I like you, I, I, I follow Jesus Christ, and I feel like it's something that I have to do, and that that's something from him. I feel like it's like, he wants me to start putting this stuff out in that way. You well, know? then you have to do it. And so that's There's why no I, question. And that's why I am, you know, it's like, I'm doing it. And now I'm at this point, with the kid coming and all that kind of stuff, it's all coming to a head, and it just feels like it's, this is the time. I don't know. I do not know what it will bring, but I just know I have to do it. But I know good things will come from it. So I look forward to sharing it with you guys when the time comes. Yeah. Look forward to hearing it. Yeah. That'll be pretty cool. Yeah. I'm just trying to get ready for Retic Fest. You know, I mean, Brian over here is going to be a youth pastor. <laughs> Julian's going to be a musician. You know, this is like this is like a, I, I don't know if this ready is devolved this or evolved into a, a good or a bad thing. I mean, that <laughs> shout out our sponsors, CB Reptile, Reptile. CB Reptile. Yeah. <laughs> <They're> like, uh, <laughs> they they've participated in. They actually have sat down with the the, the Lord of the Rings one. They, so they, C and B is Caleb and Bill. Caleb and Bill, father, father and son. Ah, oh, cool. Reptile business. I love that. And shout out C and B, father and son. <laughs> <laughs> and they sat down with it. They, they they know exactly how this thing rolls. They, okay, that's they, they, they've witnessed Brett a couple. Only. We've done a couple at their house before. That's really cool. And yeah. where are they located? Arizona, Phoenix. Phoenix that's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, I read or I heard like some article that Phoenix is getting too hot. <laughs> like like it's actually like it's always like due to climate change like getting too hot they gotta like, stop like, paving roads <laughs> they've had like oh they have over a hundred days over a hundred or something like that it's all gonna move like, underground absolutely crazy everyone's gonna live like gila monsters now. <laughs> they 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 said that like i don't know 50 years ago it would be really hot when it was in the 90s and now it's like you know Oh, crap. We didn't yeah, even think about 2020. <laughs> <laughs> I actually remember getting out of the airport in Phoenix for the first time, literally like never experiencing such heat in my life. Like wow. it's like walking into a wall of thick molasses heat. Yeah, we had that know? layover there when we, on our way to Iowa. When my son and I, we stepped out on the jet bridge and I was like, oh, my God, I think this is the hottest <laughs> it's ever been that I've stepped so off an airplane. Ever. I had my layover there on the way here and my flight got delayed by a day. So I, oh, ended you up, went out. I ended up crashing on Bill's couch. I've done so. I did, <laughs> I did a similar thing when I was coming back from Tinley, I think. I, my flight was delayed like you In know Phoenix? four or five. Yeah, so they came, picked me up, and went to dinner. And <laughs> that's why they're so good about that. Yeah, but yeah, awesome. it was already dark and everything. And, and the same thing, they like took the me 90s. to this like, Italian restaurant. Yeah. Oh, why would you want to eat pasta in the middle of the heat? Oh, <laughs> yeah. But 
I just remember thinking like this feels like an oven. It feels like I'm inside of like a toaster oven. It's yeah. after dark and I'm you walking from the car to the restaurant. And you're like, <gasps> people could not survive without technology there. <clears throat> like air conditioning, yeah. impossible to survive. Yeah. Like nobody would live there. Speaking of retake fest, uh, the fact that you're here now has significantly lo- significantly lowered my chances of making it to Pittsburgh. Oh man! <laughs> Later oh, this month. Mom. Yeah, because he, he already you get your fix with get, him being here. Exactly. Yeah, I don't like this guy that much. I'm flying all the way across for this. <laughs> I actually, it also <laughs> happens to be my anniversary, the day of retake fest. So oh wow! <laughs> what Hillary day is it? July thirtieth. So it's at the end of the month. Yeah. yeah. You coming? I, I've kind Do of like blood oath to you that I have to come really? to Pittsburgh. It's super expensive. For, are you right going now. for retake? I try to fly from here to there and haven't bought your ticket yet. Yeah. It is expensive. I have a lot of right miles. Now. We're trying to do a little, you know, this is funny. Um, so we did our first baby moon when we had Ayla, our first child. And I wanted to go like Mexico or something, and Bree just wanted to go. Or your grandma had like her 80th. Yeah. So, of course. We went to visit family, ended up being like our baby moon to Pittsburgh. Right? <laughs> Not that it wasn't great to see the family and, and, and to be there, but like I, I'm like, we have one little trip where we're going to take the whole family somewhere. And I'm like, let's go to Cabo, you know? And somehow I feel like we're going to be in Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Pittsburgh. We'll go to Nemecolon or something like that again. I'll teach you how to catch snapping turtles. If with I can your just toes. go golfing the whole time every day, I, I feel like it'll be fine. Uncle Jim will be right out there waiting for you. Uh, shout out Jim Hartle. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Brian, how many children do you have? Three. How old are they? Nine, six, and four. Great. And there may or may not be another one coming out. I'm not sure yet. I have to check. He looks at his watch. <laughs> <laughs> this is really new. I thought he was looking at his watch for a text we, from his wife, like thumbs up, thumbs down. This is, like, he's just waiting for this that. This is where we end the podcast so Brian can go make a fourth yeah. baby. He's like, did you just get a pregnant emoji text or what? Like, <laughs> The time is now. The moon is out. <laughs> so that's going to be four kids. Unless it's twins. I didn't want to get a little older and start dumping more eggs so the possibility of twins is like, there's a way up. (laughs)